they're making it very complicated. Anyway, hi, everybody. <laughs> um, good crowd today. Awesome. Okay, so i um, got some new faces and some old faces. I don't mean old, like ancient. I mean, like I know you already. Anyway, no offense. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. Um, let's see. We've got um, Anastasia is here. Um, Andres. Um, and uh, let's see. At who uses who uses sign and who doesn't sign? Who's caption dependent? Who likes captions better? Okay, okay, captions. All right. So make sure um, if you like captions, you get those turned on and um, don't change your language though. <laughs> All right. Um, some people change the language and then it affects the whole thing. So anyway, don't do that. All right. So anyway, now. Um, a few items we have on the agenda, no action items that I can tell so far, but um, it's probably, we're gonna create some action items today. So anyway, code of conduct. We follow that code of conduct that's put in our um, vision and mission statements and all of that. We treat each other with respect. No, no mean balling each other out or putting each other down or no demeaning language, etc. We all know that. Um, new faces, please introduce yourself. Um, maybe we could start with Brett. Oh, sorry, um, Bryce. I, I'm sorry, I said your name wrong. Oh, Bryce, we can't hear you. Is your microphone on, off? Bryce, tell us where you're from when you get your microphone on. Tell us what you do, um, what made you join today, um, and how you found out about this working group, etc. Bryce, we can't hear you. This is the interpreter speaking now. Wait, we're missing something. Maybe we start with Andres until Bryce figures it out, or if not, he can just type it into the chat. But we'd love to hear the introduction from him directly if you can figure it out. <laughs> Andres says, um, hello, I'm going to be using international sign language. This is my name sign, Andres Garcias. I'm from Colombia in South America. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of this group, Milad, and um, and Alfonsa. Thank you for also inviting me to this to be a part of this group. Alfonso, okay, yeah, okay, from Mexico, got it. I remember. All right, nice to meet you. And what do you do? What kind of work do you do? Okay, I work in technical development for mobile devices for Flutter. Oh, okay. I've been working that for four years in that particular company, but I've been working in the tech industry for many, many years. But now I've been just in this particular job for awesome. four years. What's, what's your favorite? Do you like um, iOS or Android? Flutter is a platform that um, uses any type of uh, operating system, Android, oh, iOS. Cool. Awesome, well, welcome. Welcome, Andres. Milad um, said, okay, Andres, if it's no problem, um, if you could share, um, Andres, about um, the status of what you're doing now, um, do you have a job? And where are you working, did you say? Um, like from, you said you're look, you had been looking and maybe in 2023, if I remember correctly, there was, um, we definitely want to support people who are, are looking. Because yeah, we want more wins for this group, for sure. Yes, thank you, Milad. 
yeah, please contact any of us. I, I we'll provide references if you need them. Great. Also keep in mind, um, if you have a job opening or like, um, thank you um, for that and welcome to CNCF for Deaf and Hard of Hearing Working Group. Um, Bryce, have you figured out your sound or no? Yes. <laughs> and hopefully you can hear me now. Uh, so a quick introduction. Uh, you know, I recently found out about this group maybe uh, one to two months ago. Um, and the closest up connection I have to most people here is probably through the Zephyr uh, project, which is um, embedded systems, Linux Zephyr operating system for embedded platforms. And I participated in uh, contributing to open source there and asking about accessibility for hard of hearing people in that conferences. And <clears throat> Uh, I got informed about the Cloud Native uh, group and this working group. So I joined here uh, just to meet everybody and see what other people are doing for accessibility. Um, I'm living in Los Angeles at the moment, uh, Los Angeles area, but I'm from Australia originally uh, 20 years ago and I moved here. <laughs> Well, welcome. Um, what brought you from Australia? Yes. Uh, I came for grad school. Uh, so I was 20 years ago interested in robotics and, you know, rovers on Mars and stuff like that. So <laughs> I came to study astronautics. Uh, but, but after a while here, I ended up with um, studying biomedical engineering and signal processing work. And uh, now most recently I work in hearing technology, uh, trying to work on my own projects as well. And awesome. follow up question. So uh, I think you were in your introduction, you did say, so you lost your hearing or are hard of hearing later on like just I think just in case people forgot because it's been a while okay yeah um <clears throat> I I've been deaf since birth I had a hearing since birth but when I was younger I uh, I didn't need to wear my hearing aids my hearing was a bit better but when I got to middle school my hearing had deteriorated I started to wear hearing aids in middle school and uh, you know, now, these late years later, my hearing is much worse, and you know, I'm wearing hearing aids full time for a, a while now, uh, well, since middle school. <laughs> um, so, uh, unfortunately, I don't sign. <laughs> so, I, I did learn a little bit of Australian sign language, but that's very different from American sign language. Uh, so, I only know a little bit <laughs> of sign language. Um, yeah, I think that answers your question. Yeah. So we're, because I think like Amy June is the yeah. only one who is like hard of hearing. So now we have like a second, we have a lot of deaf people, but hard of hearing uh, people are uh, still fewer. So it's, uh, so welcome. It's good to have uh, another person because the, the, of course the, the needs and, and uh, it's always different between hard of hearing and deaf. So uh, having that perspective is also very important. Um, so we can make sure that when we're talking about events and all things like that, that um, your views and your perspectives are included as well. So. Okay. It's, uh, great, it's, to hear. it's great to meet people here. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Awesome. I really appreciate um, some of you um, when you have to come from other side of the planet to get here, um, like Vietnam and India, and you've joined our chat at an unfortunate hour of your day. So thank you for joining our meeting, even though it's late or early where you are. And also um, thank you for the introductions, Bryce and Andres. Now, um, let's see. 
I want Catherine to go ahead and take the floor and um, take the bulk of the agenda because there's a few things that I know you need to cover. Yeah, so some of you know that we, the uh, CFP for uh, KubeCon closed recently. And one of our goals, of course, is to have uh, many people submit talks. Um, so uh, I'm very excited that we had, I think, like eight or nine talks. So um, Rob, did you end up submitting something with uh, Kesslin? Oh, great, great. So nine talks. Yeah. Yeah, um, yes. Uh, and uh, one thing that makes me especially happy is seeing people who partner up last time. So Kesslin and Rob did a talk in Paris. Uh, so now they connected and they're doing something again. Another success story is Anastasia and Costas. Uh, she did an ArgoCon uh, talk with him and Scott, and now they submitted three talks. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if two for KubeCon and one for, or I think one for KubeCon and two for Argo. Yeah, oh. there's four. Oh. Um, yeah, four. Um, two for KubeCon. And two for Argo, ArgoCon. Terrific. That's awesome. <laughs> Very good. And so one of the challenges for us is like, of course we want, well, we, we want to do both, right? We want to have to talk about uh, accessibility and we want to have people talking about the technical side, but KubeCon is not an diversity conference. And as we saw last time, there's very few talks about that. So it's really, really important to get those technical talks in because that's, again, it's a technical conference and it's really good as well to see people from the community partnering up with people in this group that may be more um, uh, experienced in, in KubeCon. Um, so uh, very, very excited about uh, Anastasia and, and Rob having found like someone who hopefully will kind of team up in the future as well. Uh, so I listed all the talks, um, or at least the ones I knew about in the agenda. So you can have a lot, uh, look, very cool uh, topics. And one of the things that we try to do is always partner up. So we have at least two speakers for each talk. So if one gets accepted, we have two speakers, right? Um, that's everything regarding KubeCon talks. Oh, Milad. Yes, that is wonderful. Nine different talks. How great. I'm wondering, though, if um, how it works when we're, um, if we have three or four that are approved and some of the others are declined, I feel obviously probably not all nine will be accepted. So um, if we do that and then like do lightning talks as well later, um, we can make some ideas for those at a later time, but um, we can also do some of those events like we did at KubeCon um, recently and workshops or, you know, learning times or whatever and uh, get everything together for that. Um, but lightning talks, that's that's later, right? I think. Yes. So the lightning talks have been submitted, like the Cube Crash, uh, the KubeCon um, talks are all in. What you're talking, the talk that you were doing, is, that you did was a project, uh, it's a lightning talk uh, for projects. So uh, right now the CFP is open. It's, uh, we can submit it as a tag and I think we should, but it's only one. You cannot do like, oh, so let's submit five or something because each project is allowed to submit one lightning talk and a maintainer track. So remember maintainer tracks are the ones that are kind of easy that, and again, like you have to be associated with a project or a tag, right? So you have to be a maintainer or the tags work as well. So I think we should try that, but we cannot submit more than one because that's per project or tag. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is, again, as a reminder, so we all have our expectations set. Last time acceptance rate was 11%. So it's very likely that most of the talks will not get accepted but we still have to try, right? So we still have to try. And that's why it's also important to team up with people who are more experienced. So that's why, you know, cause like Kaslin and Costas are, have been our maintainers or like very deep into uh, um, the um, 
into the community and they know ex they know kind of what what good talks are and so on but uh yeah so most of them will probably not be accepted hopefully we get some accepted uh but then we still have the scholarships and we will uh um i will sign us up as, as soon as the kiosk is available that's a first come first serve so i'm looking out for that so as soon as that's out i'm just going to submit and then so we can have that and then we can do other things as well all right terrific thanks uh, let's keep our fingers crossed that's it. That's and it. Can, uh, you just, can you just do it about the kiosk thing that you said if I can what explain what that is? Like you're saying that when as soon as the QS, I mean as soon as they start accepting submission for QS, you are going to apply. Yes. So the kiosk is the in the project pavilion, the little stand we had. Remember? Like we had a that's that's it's called kiosk for the projects because they're small and the booths are called booths. I don't know. So they have different names, but the kiosk are the free ones you have to. Uh, you have to be either a project again or a tag. Companies cannot get uh, these things. So that's free stuff. So we are, we're signing up for everything that's free and available, right? And try to get as much as we can. Um, if there are no questions, I would move to the next point. Uh, Milad uh, saying, well, uh, um, um, so it will be the same again in terms of sign language pace. Um, I don't know what the right word is. Um, oh, the space, like a sign language area where we had the um, drop-in area where people could come and talk and we could teach them some technical words or some signs, but um, they didn't need to sign up. They could just drop in that, um, that kind of easy conversational thing we did. Are we gonna have another one of those? I think so. You have to sign up for that. Um, but I think, I, I mean, people are, there are always new people. I think about 60% of attendees each time at KubeCon are new. So there's all, and I mean, there were 12,000 people and in Paris and how many people came to our little thing. So it's like, there was always new people. Um, so I, I think it was fun and good. Uh, I think I would love to, um, ask the CNCF if we could promote it a little bit more to get more awareness, because I feel like most people did not know. Uh, but other than that, I felt that the people that were there were very engaged. So I think we accomplished our mission, right? Like uh, awareness, uh, and talk, like connect with people in the community. Um, so I, I think it's a good idea, anyone? Oh yeah, that would be great, Amy June. She's just saying she could help promote through the, the next foundation, yeah. Um, okay. So next, uh, conference best practices. So uh, Sandeep did some uh, edits and I, that was good because I, I also um, wanted to update the doc because we've been to two KubeCons now uh, and have learned some things. So I updated that there is a PR and needs review linked in uh, in uh, the agenda. Uh, we're also working on a um, checklist for events. So thanks, Charlotte, for the amazing idea because event, events teams and idea and putting it together, she's working on that, uh, or is like the first draft is there. Uh, so basically, events teams generally work with spreadsheets and checklists. And then instead of like just putting everything in this long document, we said like, we're gonna have a document and we're gonna create a checklist that they can just download and then um, and then just use and use for themselves, right? Like uh, on accessibility for deaf and hard of hearing. Uh, and the idea is to make it as easy as possible, right? And so that is already linked in the PR. So if that goes live, it's fine. Like uh, it, if it's still a uh, work in, in, in progress. But yeah, once we have that finished, um, I think, uh, so once uh, the PR is re reviewed and merged and the uh, accessibility list is done, I think we should do an event awareness campaign. I think where we have failed a little bit is we created 
the best practices and only send it to uh, KubeCon. But of course, we always said uh, our audience is not just the Linux Foundation, right? There are a bunch of events, and we want them to use that, uh, use those resources as well. Um, so I think it would be great to do an awareness campaign. Um, so maybe uh, identify relevant tech conferences uh, and capture those in a list. Um, once we have that, uh, email event organizers, right? We can work on an email saying, like, make it a little official. If you're part of a working group, part of the Linux Foundation, like we name drop a little bit. So it, it sounds important as well, like, and not like some random person just uh, saying how they should run their events. Um, and and then I think uh, create social media posts because like people don't read emails, right? So, and we cannot trust, we cannot trust that people will read all the emails and pay attention. Then just a social media post where we can post events, you know, like, and, and just say like, hey, you should do this. And maybe like also create a little pressure, you know, because it's social, you know, where everyone can see that uh, the deaf and hard of hearing working group is uh, asking them to be more, uh, accessible and uh, it might make it a little bit more difficult to ignore than an email. Um, and then see, yeah, just, just, uh, and then I was thinking maybe also share with interpreters and agencies that, uh, because they may work with events. So whenever an interpreter mm -hmm. is working with an event, they could go and say like, Hey, do you know about this? You know? Uh, and of course, if they are already working with interpreters, they are somewhat accessible, but they may not you know, be perfect. I mean, there may be a lot of things in the document they're not aware of. So, um, yeah, if you have any other ideas, um, but I think, yeah, I think let's push that out. Let, let's get it finalized. And then when we're happy with it and we have that amazing list, which makes it really easy. Uh, yeah, let's, let's put us in campaign to get that out. So everyone, like every organization, relevant event is aware that this exists. Any thoughts or comments? Uh, I just put something in the chat. So oh. I think, yeah, I think it, it complements what you said. Uh, maybe before our working group meeting, uh, we can try to publicize in the social media. Before working group meeting, then we can also put in the chat. Slack as well. Yeah, so we need to create those um, posts and then everyone needs to help because we need to uh, uh, um, create social proof as well, right? It's like, oh, it's not just one person asking for this. It's like, oh, all these people are liking and whatever. So it's like, it resonates. So that is always important. It seems so like a little detail, liking or sharing, but people do look at that, right? Because if there is a post where no one is re reacting, they just can discard it, right? But if people are supportive, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, Anastasia? Yeah, um, maybe this is kind of off topic, but um, I was wondering um, if Linux Foundation works um, maybe in co cooperative with other smaller foundations or like boards or um, that we could do, like we could get their email list maybe and work with the people who work with them and help do some training um, for different companies or foundations or organizations with whom they already work. Yeah, we can we can ask. So I, I don't know, to be honest, but it's like, well, the Linux Foundation has several foundations within it, right? But they may know, I don't know, I can, I can ask because I'm in touch with some people. Well, we have uh, Amy June here as well. So maybe she knows as well uh, something, but, um, the more people we, yeah. I thought Anastasia was saying something, but. Oh, um, yeah, I mean like CNCF and the whole landscape. Um, there are boards and organizations that, you know, wrap into them, maybe not just CNCF, but other things that are connected to them. Yeah, and I think we should just uh, start with a sheet, right, as well, like we can ask other people, but then it's like, we know AWS can be accessible, but also not, <laughs> right, so it depends which event and who's coming, uh, of course, when uh, 
their star Rob comes, it's very accessible. Sometimes they forget about it. So like um, Google has their event, la la la, and then they're small. Like let, let's make this uh, these lists um, uh, a list, uh, and then just uh, see like because everyone like uh, on all event pages there's a an email address. So that's a logical one. Again, like I hope they do read them but I wouldn't count on that only. And then we can see if a uh, Linux foundation or any other, anyone, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a tech conference. I, I just thought we start with our industry first, right? So just because we cannot tackle everything, but like, if there is any, uh, if there is a conference you are particularly passionate about, because this applies to any conference, we can do that too, right? But it's just like, let's start with tech because that's what we're in and then uh, grow from there. Okay, and then I have something I hope you've seen. Who's, who saw, who watched the video? Hands up that I shared. Amazing. Right, so you saw it too. You watched it too, the video. Yes, it, yeah, <laughs> because you commented on it. So uh, I'm so, I mean, it was just uh, amazing. Uh, it's, I, I think it looks great and it's, it's cool that it was done completely, uh, um with volunteers That's um, yeah you can watch it later it's also it's destiny says i'll post it in the chat or yeah in... yeah so i just wanted to oh milad oh um also i i it was uh a really long discussion with the volunteers i know it was a very specific you know, with the music added and all the captioning, I know that was just a long journey to get to that video. And um, I know there's still more work to be done, but it's um, it's very sensitive. I liked that a lot. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to give like a quick, uh, behind the scenes uh, overview. So you see like what, how we did it, right? So uh, I we did talk about it that we wanted to do something like that, but I think neither, well, I didn't have any experience with it. Milad does videos, but not necessarily something like that. Um, so uh, the footage, right? So I recorded several snippets of Milad's narrating, you know, like coming from the conference, I'm at the keynote. So he was our, he's the glue that puts it all together. And then the two of us, um, we were record did several um, recordings uh, while we we're at the kiosk speaking. And so just like little snippets, right? And then we had like all that footage. Oh, and then Bart, of course, uh, uh, Bart did some interviews with you, uh, uh, which was great, uh, great content as well. And so we had suddenly all, all the, all those videos. And then uh, I was like, okay, I didn't even know who could help us. <laughs> I was like. So uh, Bart connected us to Gabriele Sidi. He is a uh, Italian based um, video producer. Uh, he's a freelancer uh, and he was, he wanted to volunteer, right? Like uh, he's, he normally gets paid for that, but he said like, I'm gonna do this for free. Uh, um, and so he guided us through the process. He said like, first thing we need to uh, uh, decide on is the music. And I was like, okay, we got the music. He, he sent me to what where to get it. And I was like, okay, now we need the snippets. And then I was like, we took the little snippets and put the stories together and he would build it and um, and yeah, they look great. And I really wanted to make sure that he and Bart get a thank you, right? Cause it's like, especially because both are freelancers. So my hope is that when this is like published um, that it also benefits them professionally, right? People see um, their great work. Um, so, um, so there is a little thank you side at the end that names them with their websites. Um, and so when we post it as well, make sure to call them out and say how great it was. Uh, let's give them some love. Cause again, it's all free. Uh, and uh, we want to keep people motivated when they do contribute. And I mean, if it helps them professionally, you know, like maybe they can help again. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's it, it should be, hopefully it, it will be a win-win. Oh, Catherine, 
So, so it was your host, George, the music for the video? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, it is like you have like there are like little there's he showed me a page when you where you can pick the tracks and like it's free stuff like it's like I don't know so I didn't know even where to look and so he guided me through the process and um so yeah so it was great to have a pro kind of telling you what to do because it was like otherwise it would be like overwhelming um and yes as Milad said it took a while but I think uh it was worthwhile and so the video is live but not, it's still unlisted. They have to, uh, so don't share it yet. You can share it with your friends and so on. Um, the CNCF, uh, we broke it also down in three little smaller uh, parts. So part one, two, and three uh, for social media. Uh, and the goal is for the CNCF to share that. So it's better to kind of, when that comes in, that we share that and augment that because they have much bigger reach. So uh, let's wait for those to come. And then as well as like three pieces versus like one big one. Uh, so we get more out of it. So it's a little bit slow, the process, but it's like, I'm like, when are, when are we going to see this live? But it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's the machinery is in the works, but we'll have to be a little patient. Hopefully we can, you know, blast it out and show it to the world. And yeah. And I hope you enjoy it. Okay. Hey, Beautiful. Great. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, so one thing, so who, who selected all this question of everything? Um, well, I, it, yeah, we work together. So basically what I started to do is like little uh, what's it called? Because that was difficult, like little uh, folders. And you can see it, they're all in our folders, you know, like the team on stage, the team at the kiosk, the team at, you know, and then I started kind of saying like, oh, that's one of the, and then it's like, at the beginning, it's like, you need to organize all the content. And one was like, uh, Milad narrating, you know, and then you have like all these things and then you start pulling it together. And I was like, so we gave them direction, but at some point uh, I said as well, like, well, make it like if you, feel it should be shorter or longer it's like he's a pro you know because it's like uh, but it, yeah it's just a piece by piece and okay. the interviews we tried to have the interviews kind of like spread out right and which which is great now because in the three parts each part has one video interview right so uh that's spread out as well but yeah it's, it's just so far so far so far awesome but... To everyone, yeah, I love a round of applause. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's I'm done with my section, and I think Catherine, one more thing is the accessibility checker that the Sharla has prepared is wonderful. We want to give her a round of applause as well. Thank yeah, it, that was a great idea because it's like, it's true. The, the document, the benefit of the document as well is that it provides a lot of context, right? Like, why do we need interpreters during the networking? Why is this important, right? So that is important because people don't really, may not really think about it, right? Because they, if they don't know anyone who's affected, it's just not something that crossed their mind. So there's a lot of education, but it makes it also very lengthy and cumbersome to identify the things that you need to do, right? So I think uh, reading it for context, but then having something that's short and sweet with the steps is like super beneficial because you need both, right? You need to educate people because otherwise they think like, why, why are you asking for this, right? They may just not, not understand. Um, like what well, the captions should be, on the screen, right? Versus on the phone. Why? Right? Like, and then you understand like, well, it makes people uncomfortable just looking because they look, they're not paying attention or you cannot see the demo and, and the caption at the same time. It's like, and then, you know, like once you say that people are like, right, makes sense. Right. And we do need that understanding because if people don't understand it, then they're, they may just think like, oh, it's not as necessary and so on. So I'm really excited. Yeah. So I think I'm glad we didn't promote it too actively before having that, because I think that's a very important piece. So yeah, great call, great idea. And thanks for putting it together, Sharla. Uh, 
Okay, um, moving down the agenda, Milad, is this next one's yours? Um, the deaf and hard of hearing meeting schedule. Um, do you want to take that? Yeah. Yes, um, Anastasia, also in deaf and cloud native, that meeting um, with Rob as the speaker. Um, I didn't really know about the promotion. I didn't know what had happened with that, but um, we had different vendors that we didn't really have any idea. You know, Anastasia, Anastasia said, no, we didn't have to promote for those vendors um, because it's open source. And I was like, oh, okay. So that was kind of my first time and I was, I didn't know what to do. And I, I hope um, it wasn't a big problem. <laughs> but next time, if anyone wants to talk at that, um, put that, um, make a note of it because we're looking for people to do that. And we're focusing on open source particularly. So um, any presentation you wanna make about open source. And so I would love to see, it's a great challenge for us um, because um, you know we're using cloud and AWS and all that stuff. So if, um, if we didn't have that, how would we understand it clearly, for example? Um, so uh, that it, it's, a, it's a challenge. Anastasia, did you wanna add? Yes. Um, the real life examples are what we're looking for and um, challenges that we experience. Yes, so um, Rob, did, did you have your hand up? Did you wanna speak? I, I don't know if I missed you or no. He seems like he's busy, Destiny says. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if you wanted to add. D Rob, did you wanna add? Rob? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he saw us. Okay, so never mind. It's fine. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay, maybe he needs more coffee at his coffee shop that he's in. So maybe he's he's gazing into his coffee. <laughs> I think something something's wrong with our connection, possibly. No. <laughs> anyway, okay. Oh, so no, he was moving his lips. Robert moving his lips. Yeah, um, uh, Rob. <laughs> Yeah, so Milad says, um, yesterday evening, um, I was thinking about um, needing a new website, you know, because we've had this for four years. And um, I would like to, you know, focus on what the world needs to see from us, you know? So um, ideas are welcome. And then once we get what that's, what we want that to look like set, you know, in like in one sentence in one strategic plan, and then we'll get together. Um, just it's, it'll be a great experience. So um, sorry, Milad's connection has jumped a little. So anyway, for the cloud native, um, that video um, for posting that and sharing that, I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, that's on the agenda. Um, there's a link to in the chat for that, Destiny says. Check it out. Okay, Jay, did you have something to talk about? Yeah, I do. Okay, so right now we have a PR for the first video on the word container. Um, it's on the agenda. So if you could check it out, there's a person, um, the, the maintainer's name is Soko Son. Uh, they created the PR for that. And so that's the draft that we've chosen. So look it over. Um, once it's approved, we're going to be using that as a template here on out for the new videos that are going to be added. So check it out, give any feedback. If we all agree that it looks good, we're going to be using that for the first video. We also have a preview of what it looks like on the agenda. So look it over and see what it looks like and give any feedback and comments. I need any more comments and feedbacks before we make that final decision. Also, 
If there's any other videos that you want to send out, any other words, please let me know. And then we'll put that on Slack so you can see that and everybody can have a look at it and um, go ahead and video yourself doing some signs if you want, uh, explaining what, that, what the signs look like for the tech world. Um, and then we can fix it, edit it, whatever, change your background, whatever you need to do. And then we'll do a PR on it and we'll process that as well. And we can all learn how to do that. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, Anastasia? Yeah, I would add one thing, like um, the columns, in terms of the columns. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Please share that feedback so I can follow up. Oh, okay. Um, Catherine, did you want to speak? I think Milad was first. Oh, sure. Milad. Yeah, go ahead, Milan. Okay, it wasn't, it's, it's not important who goes first. But anyway, um, in terms of the glossary of different technical terms um, in sign, um, um, Andres, you may be interested in this as well, um, the signing of tech words, because it's interesting. Um, we're asking everyone's opinion and Andres, you'd, you'd be a great contributor for um, signed words as well. Um, we're doing ideas in terms of trying to do a mix of different kinds of sign language and how we address different tech words. So it would be terrific to get some of your Colonia um, involvement. So that'd be great. So, um, and um, Anastasia, perhaps you could uh, facilitate that piece of the group. And Andres is saying, yeah, I'm happy to help look over it, see how I can help contribute. Yeah, and we'll put that on Slack. Slack are you on Slack with us, Andres? Yeah, I joined it. And, and Jay's saying, yeah, join the Slack channel and please contribute. Yeah, and uh, I think Andres is actually in, because uh, we have a glossary uh, channel as well. Um, so um basically join that channel and have the conversation there right just don't go and do your own site because it's like good like have like that conversation with the team um and then uh, send your draft in there the idea is to have all those conversations in there and not on um dms again this is open source so everything happens in the open right so uh, all your discussions and everything should be in that channel uh, some you may see some people came they're just curious because they saw sign language but that's fine you know people might just check in and see what's uh, happening and other people come to actually work um, but yeah just just have those conversations in there uh, make a little video put your draft put your suggestion have those conversations in there right so uh, that's what the channel is for uh, and we have a particular channel just for that so it doesn't get lost and because our channel will has like many very tip, uh, topics that is a channel for that discussion. And just one little thing that I would suggest whenever you do the videos, just flip your flip your phone. Um, so you see like, so the full screen, so you don't see the black part of it. So you, you have, you have basically the person's in a bigger screen. So that works too, but like, uh, let's take full advantage of the, of the, um, um, of the screen, right? It's still the traditional, like other people are used to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So exactly. How many? So how okay, many? Yeah, so there's, there's some new signs to add to that glossary for sure, Destiny's saying. Um, Sandeep, um, you said something in the chat? Oh, and Rob is saying something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, question. Um, it's important to have a good background as well. A, a blank yeah. wall behind you or something. Yeah. Jay says exactly. And we're on Slack. We already have some videos there you can look at and follow the examples. Um, and, um, you know, just kind of copy the format and see what we need. And it's, it'll be better for everybody if we all kind of have them uniform. Um, how many new signs are we going to add to the glossary, um, per month? You know, I mean, that's anyone's guess. We don't have a set number at this point. It's just, um, if you have time, make a video, add to the, add to the glossary and um 
I'm not sure if you're asking if there's new words, but I mean, we just, we already have a glossary to follow just to clarify that. So we're not just making up random stuff. So we just wanna add signs for the glossary terms that we already have identified. So um, add language for that. Does that clarify? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, so that is what I'm asking that we already have a glossary, okay? And we are creating the signs for the glossary. So how many signs are we adding on an average per month? Oh boy, I don't have a number for that. I don't have a number right now. We just are kind of doing it ad hoc. Rob's agreeing. Yeah, so um, I, I don't know. We have less than 100 words so far, but I don't know what the average is. Rob's saying so far we have what? How did, what did you say? I think that I know of like two. We have our, two videos right now. Um, but Kubernetes, Kubernetes in the container. So the first one is for the container actually, and the second video is the Kubernetes video, but we're thinking we might change that because of the background issue. So we'll see. So, so, so in okay. one video, you are actually covering multiple groceries or per grocery there is one video. Okay, so yeah, we have one glossary and then we're just adding signs to match those glossary terms. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it's not like we, we already have a sign video for container. We're just adding the sign because we know what container means. We're just adding the sign for it. So people have signed vocabulary to use. Yeah, it's not a new glossary. Yeah, um, we're just doing signs. Um, it's on GitHub. It's a GitHub PR. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. Um, it's not, this is Jay. It's not ready for check-in yet, but we want you to all review it, see what it looks like now. Give us your feedback, your comments, and then we'll talk about what to edit and then we'll push it out. Okay. Um, yeah. Who was first? I, I feel like we'll, I feel like we'll finish it first. Don't you think? Well, it really just depends. Anastasia? Um, are we doing it in ASL or um, like kind of un international sign language or are we trying to just focus on ASL? Um, well, it's not specifically ASL or specifically international sign. We're trying to, you know, make just a, a sign generalist, you know, vocabulary list for if we go to KubeCon everybody's signing the same thing. You know, we all have this common vocabulary because it's just, it's so much because if we're, if we're making it, you know, we're, we're trying to make a sign for a technical term that everyone will be able to comprehend when they're at the conference. And Anastasia is saying, um, like a sponsored glossary who's involved, it, can anyone be involved? Can anyone contribute? Or is it a limited community um, to this group of people, or are we expanding it to anyone who wants to contribute? How are we doing that? The goal, yes, is to have open contributing um, via the Slack channel. Yeah, if you have a video for us, put it on, you know, and um, we want what the deaf people prefer as a group and not just like make up signs for whatever they're using currently. Rob saying so we're not using um like we're not using those com common terms like hello or you know common phrases we're not teaching people everyday conversational sign language we're doing text specific vocabulary so that we have that milad a couple of weeks ago i was having a conversation um about um and the signing happy hour and we were talking about, um, Jay was saying that um, you can add here and Catherine can too, um, but if anybody can think of words that they want, but um, the glossary in my understanding is we see, you know, the context, for example, like container, and we could give some context for why we sign that meaning you know 
yes, here it's it's not like a general box container. It's a container specific to our work. And um, so that way we know that there's there's a sign for container. This is what we're using generally. But if you're if you're curious about um, the explanation for why we sign that, it might be nice to have that there as well. And um, then it, we have, this is how we translated this to this specific sign, so that if hearing people who do not know sign watch it, they can understand it. Or um, you know, it, it I don't want it to be too fast. I want it to be accessible for people who are deaf and hard of hearing. That's just my opinion. I mean, I'm. I can put my hand out now. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I just wanted to say as well, like if you look at the video, uh, the goal is not only to teach uh, uh, deaf signers how to uh, sign that particular um, term, but also it's very slow. And if you see Andrew do does it in two ways, because of course the glossary, most people are gonna see the glossary uh, are going to be hearing, right? And then so it is like the huge, like a huge benefit is that suddenly they're going to see a video of, oh, this is sign language. Again, it's awareness. And uh, hopefully they will think it's fun to learn how to say Kubernetes and, and container. And so I think that's like an added benefit um, that it's also like sensibilis sensibilizes exposure. people. Oh. Huh? exposure exactly and people like awareness and and yeah I mean like how cool would it be that if in I don't know a few years then you meet a random person and they're like oh I know container or whatever like you know like it's this uh I think it helps with the whole uh awareness and sensibilizing the community about the need of accessibility and so on so that's why we're trying to make it really easy because I've seen like sometimes you see videos on YouTube since uh, most of you know that I'm learning ASL right so it's like if you see it very fast it's it's really hard you're like oh what what's happening right like so for us hearing people who are learning you know it has to be slow and so so I think the video the pace that Andrew did was really good uh, and is very didactical so that's awesome Terrific. Um, okay. Anything anybody has to add um, for Travis or Andres? Anybody want to add anything? Travis? Yeah, this is Travis. I wanted to add that um, Milad mentioned um, that they wanted to expand the glossary and show the why behind some of the signs that are given. I agree, but then I was realizing if I am familiar with these particular technology con technological concepts and I understand where they're coming from, then that kind of creates a little bit more clarity for the signs. But if you think about people that know nothing about Kubernetes or don't have the technical background, they're not going to really care about the why sometimes, but the people that do, I feel like the why is important. Just a little bit of an opinion. Good point. Um, so do you think we'd rather have the description in sign language or maybe have some text? Mm, I don't know. I like the sign Destiny's saying. I like, I like the sign explanation. Yeah. Jay says maybe. All right. Okay. And just, okay. we're just trying to provide um, a sign for the word first later in the future right now i just want the sign really i just want the vocabulary and so we can get this moving more quickly so if if you think it's better and you want more explanation well like you know you could show it from two different angles like we we're talking about a brief explanation and or do you think the explanation video should be separate it, what do you prefer it well yeah separate. separate is fine everybody's talking once <laughs> um yeah I, I i think maybe later on the explanation destiny's saying Jay says we're all talking at once, yeah. <laughs> Travis? Yeah, this is Travis. So you'll have the explanation in different languages, right? Not just ASL or English. Well, yeah, ASL, I think. Yeah, just if we're, we're doing a sign glossary and um, it, I think you could do explanations in your own language. You know, I mean, obviously Anastasia could do BSL. We could have Mexican sign language. We could have things like that, but that's a future hope. 
I, I really just want to keep to getting a common sign um, glossary out there so people can get the vocabulary. So for now, Milad's saying focusing on the vocabulary. I got it. Okay, I see. And then expanding it later, possibly, but um, everybody can do um, explanations in their own language at a, a later date, possibly. Um, did you have something else to add? This is Dino Chen. I do want to say that in Asia, um, it may be easy to have the explanation, but have it done in the different Asian countries, Chinese, Hong Kong, different things, talking about the different technological concepts, like what Kubernetes means, and then the sign. I don't I feel like we should also get deaf and hard of hearing contributors from these Asian countries to also share their concepts for technology signs so that we could all learn also and connect the concepts to the signs and elevate ourselves as well. I feel like we could learn the signs in ASL, maybe translated into international and then also then translated into our own country. Got language. it. Now, if Rob or Milad or Anastasia or Catherine do a talk in Europe, but nothing is focused on our topics or nothing is being hosted in Asia with topics like this, one second, the interpreter is not quite sure. Did you catch that other interpreter? Mm -hmm. There's 14 different languages, you know, that I know we could work in, but I could answer um, what you're saying, um, that question Anastasia is saying. Um, it's really challenging in Asia. And you know, I used to live in Asia myself for quite some time. And I was in South Korea. And um, I didn't know any people in the area who were Kubernetes or, you know, um, AWS users um, who could contribute to something like this. So um, if you can and you could help us connect that way and get more people from um, those particular countries or like someone from China or someone from Vietnam or somebody who works with Kubernetes, and you could help us recruit and get the word out. That'd be great because I I lived there and I I didn't know anyone there who did that. So who was deaf or hard of hearing? So yeah, um, you might need to do some some work, hopefully, in recruiting. And maybe within a year or two, we can get some more voices from Asia to join us. Thank you. Okay, well, we need to wrap up. Rob saying. Yes, <laughs> Destiny's saying, oh, go ahead, Rob. Yep, we got to wrap, we got to wrap up. Um, sorry, interpreters, I know you got to go. Um, thank you for everybody being involved in the meeting. Good to see you all again and um, have nice to see you all. Bye, see you soon. <laughs>